Okay, this is part 16 of Champion. June. I don't stir, but through my half-lidded, sleepy eyes, I see Day sit up in bed beside me and bury his face in his arms. He's breathing heavily. Seven minutes later, he gets up quietly, casts one last glance in my direction, and disappears at the balcony doors. He's as silent as ever, and if him waking up from his nightmare hadn't roused me, he would easily have left my room without my ever knowing. But I do know, and this time I rise right as he leaves. I throw on some clothes, pull on my my boots and head out after him. The cool air washes over my face and moonlight drenches the whole night in dark silver. Even in his deteriorating condition, he's still fast when he wants to be. By the time I catch up with him at Union Station and follow him through the streets of downtown, my heart is pounding steadily in the way it does after a thorough workout. By now, I already know where he's going. He's returning to his family's old home. I look on as he finally reaches the intersection of Watson and Figueroa, turns the corner and heads inside a tiny boarded up house with a faded X still painted on its door. Just being back here makes me dizzy with the memory. I can't imagine how much worse it must be for Day. Gingerly, I make my way over to the boarded windows, then listen intently for him. He goes in through the back door. I hear him shuffling around inside, his footsteps subdued and muffled, and then stop in the living room. I go from window to window until I finally find one that still has a crack between two of its wooden planks. At first, I can't see him, but eventually I do. Day is sitting at the living room table with his head in his hands. Even though it's too dark inside for me to make out his features, I can hear him crying. His silhouette trembles with grief and his anguish is etched into every single crumpled, devastated muscle of his body. The sound is so foreign that it tears at my heart. I've seen Day cry, but I'm not used to it. I don't know whether I ever will be. When I reach up to my face, I realize that tears are running down my cheeks, too. I did this to him, and because he loves me, he can never really escape it. He'll remember the fate of his family every time he sees me, even if he loves me, especially if he loves me.